So we got old Bertha fired up, got the grill on her. Things is looking good, folks. Stick around because this is a southwestern Chipotle honey glazed shrimp that will give you the happy dance for sure. Hey folks, welcome to camp. My name is Kent Rollins and we're doing some cowboy cooking. And today, guess what we're cooking? On the grill, one of my favorites, a chipotle honey shrimp. Folks, it's easy to do, it's quick. There's just a little prep time that you have to do the night before. So how do we get that ready to do? Hey, we made a little old sauce marinade that we put the shrimp in. And just like always, Shan will have that right in the description below. Whew but it's got some of them chipotle peppers in it, some honey, some garlic. It gives that shrimp so much flavor. This is a dish that you can serve as an appetizer or a main course meal or just a snack in the middle of the day. To start this off, we got us some unpeeled shrimp. I peeled them off really well, put them in a bowl, and then we mixed up our marinade. put them right in a Ziploc bag and you can see all that good juice and flavor in there. Ooh wee. Them little fellers is took a bath in there how long? All night. I like to do it at least 10 hours if I can get that in. In the fridge as some people would call it but I'm gonna call it the ice box. Start your fire whether it's in the backyard. Don't do it in the middle of the living room floor okay. But get you some of these here skewer sticks i think is what you call them they're really long toothpicks for people with a large mouth that's what they were originally designed for so you get way back in them crevices soak them i like to soak them a good 45 minutes or an hour because if you don't you know what's going to happen what can what will happen you will have nothing left of these and them little shrimps is hard to pick up and roll around now i like to start at the back of the shrimp where the tail was right in the center, pull him up here a little so he ain't so kinked, and run him down there. And however many you think you can get on there, you go ahead. Well, folks, we got them all skewered up or pitchforked or whatever you want to do this on. I'm going to season them now with a little bit of our Red River Ranch Mesquite because I like to give them just one more little hit of flavor. So roll them little rascals over. We got them all seasoned up, and while they just sitting there resting and letting that seasoning soak in there a little, I got to get old Bertha ready to go to make a grill out of her. Well, a lot of you have been saying... Where's Bertha? Where's she at? Bertha is here in living color this morning with a lot of hot love coming out of her gullet, I promise you. She knows how to get the job done. These plates just all come out. The eyes are all different sizes, fit a Dutch oven or a skillet smoked tight. So let me get these plates out of here and then we'll take the tops out of them. Smooth expanded metal. Got a few braces on it. If you don't, it'll get too warped and it will fall down in the hole. Bertha will consume it. So we're gonna let her get good and hot and cauterized and ready to go. Then we're gonna get them little shrimpies over here and ooh, we, I am ready to break out me some of that goodness. Well, folks, as you've seen, I raked that fire to one end there a little. I got me a cooler spot. These shrimp have warmed up a little, but I'm going to lay them right over here. 
and let them warm just a little more before we kick them down there on that end. So we're just letting her slow down just a little before we go back over here on the hot side. Now, if you're doing this with a gas grill, preheat that thing to about 400. Make sure it's really good and clean. Give it a good oiling. Slap them on there. Now, if you're trying to get a little flavor and you're cooking with some good smoking wood, say you're using some kind of fruit wood, cherry, cedar, anything like that, shut that lid just a little bit and let that circulate to get you some of that smoke flavor. But folks, it don't take long to grill some shrimp. We're gonna flip them over just a tad, just to warm them up on both sides here a little. And let me tell you folks, the little stick is hot. So I'm gonna try to do them with this here tongy. Well, folks, we let them warm about a minute each side, so I'm going to chunk them down here on the hot end, and it ain't going to take them long. By the time I get them down there, all of them, some of them going to be ready to turn. I like to let shrimp warm up for one reason, folks, just a little before you throw a cold one on the grill. It's going to keep him from shriveling up oh so tight. That one was hot, so I'm going to use this. And we're going to go about probably a minute and a half now and then we're gonna flip them over. You wanna grill them, I think them big time fancy people call it, till they are opaque. Now to me, that means they're done. So I'm just gonna grill them till they're done. Yeah, I'll check it again to make sure. No, hey, you're not a shrimper. You're a beagle. Whoo, folks, them do smell good, and I do love me some shrimp on the grill. Now, you seen me take these and get the fire ready, and then we raked all the coals to one end there a little, had me a spot about like that to where it was cooler. Place them rascals on the cool side of that grill, let them go about a minute, flipped them over, let them warmed up just a little. That way they don't shrivel quite as bad. Then we took them down there, put them on the hot side of that grill, probably a minute, minute and a half on each side, just till we get that good caramelization, that good color. They turn opaque. You cook them any longer, folks, they're gonna go to pull in a little more and they're gonna get really dark and really tough to chew. Now, folks, I'm talking about this good color here that's sort of opaque, sort of translucent in a way. You can see it and it's got that nice shine. But you can see where these shrimps have been deveined, they've pulled a little. That's also a good sign to know that them shrimp, when they pull like that, they are done. But one of the best ways to tell that they're done is, eat one of them. Oh, mm. Mm. got a little spice, a little heat, and a little sweet. Oh my goodness, we're gonna put all the seafood restaurants out of business if only my water hole was full of shrimp. That chipotle pepper gives it that little dab of heat that you need on them shrimp. The mesquite gives it a little bit of that smoky flavor that we seasoned it with, but that honey gives it oh so sweet. I would call it a southwestern style, maybe a little spicy. Folks are gonna say, well, on a scale from one to 10, Ken, how hot is it? It's just right to me. If it's too hot for you, it's probably a 10 is all I can tell you. You see me put these shrimp in a Dutch oven. I like to let them sit just a minute. Sure, they ain't gotta rest like a steak, but I like to let them sit just a second and they sort of get that glazed color with them. They'll go to shining just a little more. Now, if you wanna even help that process just a little, cut you two lemons in half or cut you some slices that are about like that, put them on that grill and let them get a little char to them. It's gonna help release that lemon's flavor a little more. And right as you pull them suckers off and got them on something, give them a little squeeze over there. Good to go they are and good to eat. If you cook them fellers a little too long, you'll know it the first bite. Chewy, tough, hard to swallow. That's the thing that people do most of the time is overcook some shrimp, especially if you're on the grill and the flames are licking up through there. It don't take long to cook one of these little fellers. So folks, we hope you learned something. And if you had time to take a nap like the big, hey, that's okay too. While you was watching, you can go back and rewind and watch it over. So glad to get back to old Bertha and the wagon out here in Mother Nature's kitchen. God give us a great day he did today. But we want to thank you so much for stopping by here. We appreciate it. Me and Shannon and the Beagle never take it for granted. We don't. And folks, we have so many families that sit down and watch this stuff together because that's what they're trying to create. Wholesome, clean, value, good food that you can share with your family, your friends. And that's what my mother always told me. It's about bringing people together. That's what food is for. And 
the little young kids that watch us and their parents email us or they make a comment on YouTube touches mine and Shannon's heart so much. We, we appreciate that because that's where it starts, right there in the home at a small age. And we've got two families in particular that we'd like to give a shout out to to them youngins. And one of them is Noah and his mother. Oh, oh, how we thank y'all so much for watching Noah. And I also want to thank Donovan and Jasmine and their parents for watching. We do. We appreciate all you families we too. And it is, it is always a blessing to me when I get up and answer them comments and somebody says, hey, before we went to bed last night, me and the young'uns, we had to sit and watch that Cowboy Kent Rollins video. So folks, be sure and hit that subscribe button. And like always, Shan will have all the information in the little deal below. And God bless you each and every one and see you down the shrimpy trail. Mm.